right. Hey, how did we do on that trivia? How many questions did you get right? How many of you knew that there was trivia questions? Yeah. All right. You know what? We're going to start it all over again. No, we're not. We're just going to get started. I'm glad that you're here tonight. Let's start with uh, let's start with a song. Let's start with a song. If you trust God and you know it, clap your hands. And then there's a little spot for you to clap your hands. All right, so that's what that means right there is clap your hands. Can you practice clapping your hands, Grip? Right. Okay, no, 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 no. You don't need to practice a round of applause. It's just practice clapping your hands. Okay, let, we're going to practice clapping our hands twice. Ready? Here we go. I'm a little nervous. This is live on YouTube for the world to see. I'm a little nervous. All right? But we're going to do it anyway. Here we go. If you trust God and you know it, clap your hands. If you trust God and you know it, clap your hands. If you trust God and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you trust God and you know it, clap your hands. All right, so that goes with the first, the first lesson that we did about trusting God. You remember that? Can you remember that far back? Trust God. You remember? Then we talked about obeying God. All right, here we go. If you obey God and you know it, stomp your feet. If you obey God and you know it, stomp your feet. If you obey God and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you obey God and you know it, stomp your feet. All right, and then tonight we're going to talk about loving God. Do you love God? Amen. Oh, you got it already. Here we go. If you love God and you know it, say amen. amen. If you love God and you know it, say amen. amen. If you love God and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you love God and you know it, say amen. amen. Do you trust God? Amen. Do all three. Here we go. If you trust God and you know it, do all three. Amen, if you trust God and you know it, do all three. Amen, if you trust God and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you trust God and you know it, do all three. Amen. All right. Excellent. Wow. You guys got the, you guys got the, the energy going. I was nervous at first, but you pulled it all together. There we go. Uh, let's, uh, let me see. Let's see. This, this one is a stand for God no matter what. But, do you, but I think you, you'll get the tune. It's pretty simple, so we'll just try it out. You didn't sing this one last week, right? All right, here we go. Stand for God no matter what. No matter what. Okay, hold on just a second. Sorry about that. I, I added a little punctuation here to give you a little bit of an idea. Now, the last time I was in here with you two weeks ago, right, we, uh, we pretended to be a blue whale. Do you remember that? And it got really loud in here. All right, so this, is, uh, this little punctuation here is supposed to tell you that no matter what is the important part, right? So uh, stand for God no matter what. No matter what! Right? So can you do it like a blue whale? <laughs> nice and loud. Okay, here we go. Stand for God no matter what. There you go. Stand for God no matter what. Noah did he love the Lord. Stand for God no matter what. Obey God no matter what. Obey God no matter what. Noah did he love the Lord. Obey God no matter what. Oh, trust. Here we go. Trust in God no matter what. Trust in God no matter what. No what did he love the Lord? Trust in God no matter what. Excellent. Hey, I wanted to take just a minute to remind you that uh, that we have a theme verse. Who remembers the theme verse? Theme verse for the entire month on Wednesday night. I'll give you a clue. It's in Genesis. I'll give you another clue. It has to do with Noah. 
I'll give you another clue. It has to do with grace. Okay, all right. There we go. Uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. All right, let's say it together. Genesis 6, 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Who has it memorized? All right, only those who have it memorized. Oh, if you have it memorized, you have it memorized. Stand up if you have it memorized. Ooh, be brave. Stand up if you have it memorized. Stand up if you have it memorized. Okay. All right. Oh, stand up. There should be some more people standing. Especially, I'm looking back to this corner back here. There should be some people standing back here. All right. All right. So Genesis six eight. Only those who have it memorized. Ready together. Oh, yeah, very good. I can tell you were reading it. Fibbers. Oh, no, I have it memorized. Uh-huh. You ready? Those of you who have it memorized, here we go. Genesis 6, 8. All right, very good. You can be seated. Everybody all together. Genesis 6, 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Just the guys? Genesis 6, 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Just the girls. Genesis 6, 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Excellent. Wonderful. That reminds me of this song. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. We sang this a couple weeks ago. Let's sing it together here tonight. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. That is excellent singing. You know what we've learned from our study in Noah so far? Is that Noah, uh, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was brave, right? Noah trusted God and Noah obeyed God. God told him to build a boat and, uh, and he did build that ark. So let's sing just this chorus. Here we go. Trust and obey For there's no other way To be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. That's a good lesson for every single one of us. We'll talk a little bit more about that tonight, and then we'll build on it. We have a missionary that we are going to be uh, uh, collecting money for all month long. And at the end of the month, we're going to send this, uh, this missionary the, uh, the money that we collect here on Wednesday nights. We've, we've started already. But I want to take a minute to introduce you to our missionary just a little bit more. Do you know their name? Do you know where they are? Do you know what they do? Right? They run an orphanage, right? We talked about that. And uh, they are in a place called the Philippines. The Philippines that's right. And that is uh, Brother Teddy and Lagaya Fulfer, our missionaries to the Philippines. And uh, they run an orphanage over there. How many of you know how far away from here the Philippines is? How many of you know? How many of you know where the Philippines is? If you're like, if I brought you a map, you could say, yes, I know where the Philippines is. Does anybody know? Does anybody know? Look, all right. Well, I figured it out. I actually found where the orphanage is and used Google Maps to, to get very, very specific. I am from right about here. It is 7,347.82 miles over to the uh, Subic Bay uh, Children's Home there in the Philippines. I was going to do it live, but my computer is so slow, it was not being happy with that when I was ch testing it out earlier, which makes me glad I tested it out. All right, but, um, but that's how far it is. You can see that's where we are, that little white dot, and you would have to go all the way past Hawaii, which is right about there, I think, and all the way past, all the way over 
uh, to the Philippines right over there. And uh, maybe I can show it to you a little bit more later on. But that is our missionary. So who has missionary offering this week for... Who's going to receive the offering here for us? Can I, tr- can I trust you to... Oh, no. Maybe Mr. Sticky Fingers over... Well, come on. Here we go. Here we go. Quickly, son. Let's go. Here we are. All right. All right, we've got money is coming, pouring in, literally. Go get somebody who's ready. Go get somebody who's ready. Go get somebody who's ready. There you go. All right, the paper money that makes a little whooshing sound as you put it in. There we go. A little bit of paper. All right, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I would love it if I could barely fit the top on it by the time we're done and ready to send this over to the orphanage. All right, so, oh, there we go. Anybody else with some... Missions, money. Oh, she's ready. She's ready now. Okay, Okay. all right. He's working his way back around. He's working his way back around. Back around. All right, there he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Yes. All right. Very, very good. I'm excited. That is filling up nicely. And uh, we'll get that sent off to our missionaries as, uh, as soon as we're done. Uh, as soon as we're done here. All right. Uh, let's see. We are, um, reminder, they not only help um, boys and girls who don't have a mom and a dad, their mom and dad have passed away or, um, or have left them, neglected them. Um, they don't not only help them with uh, physical needs like their clothes, their food, the things that they need, but they also, they also tell those little boys and girls about Jesus And uh, some of them have never heard that there is a God that loves them and cares for them. And uh, so that's one other thing that they do there. So that money will help tremendously uh, for our missionaries in telling those little boys and girls about Jesus. How many of you have ever been on a boat before? How many of you have ever been on a boat before? All right, maybe about... uh, two-thirds of the group. Anybody not been on a boat ever before? Not been on a boat ever? No kind of boat at all? All right. Um, Does Disneyland count? I don't think Disneyland is a boat, but um, I don't know. Um, uh, There might be one at Disneyland, maybe. But um, what? uh, there's lots and lots and lots of different kinds of boats. What kinds of boats uh, do we know about? Let me see. There's, um, there's, a uh, what is that? Kayaks. Yeah, those are kayaks. Anybody done a kayak? That's pretty fun. Um, there's, uh, there's canoes. How many of you know the difference between a kayak and a canoe? Really? Can you, can somebody explain the difference between a kayak and a canoe? A lot of hands just went down. That's what I thought. Uh, you know the difference between a kayak and a canoe? Hmm, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. Uh, uh, has what? You can self-write a kayak and a canoe you can't? I don't think that's true either. <laughs> Made from a skin of a deer? I'm not, not, not any one that I've ever ridden in. Uh, <laughs> do you know the difference? Huh? Yeah, so, so a kayak actually has a cockpit that you sit down into with your legs out in front of you. You're basically sitting right on top of water level. And, uh, and a canoe, usually up on top of the uh, top railing. Well, that's kind of interesting, though. I, I didn't know that. I had to look that up this afternoon. Um, and then even then, something like this, you're like, well, that's kind of a mixture of the two. Uh, to which I say, okay, <laughs> that's fine. All right, so other, uh, oh, this, this is a canoe, though, right? This is like a... This is like a party canoe. <laughs> this is like eight people in there or something. 
Um, so uh, canoes come in all different type, uh, shapes, sizes, and everything. Look at look at uh, this one is a is a racing canoe that um, uh, uh, Harrison just won gold for the 200 meter canoe sprint in the Olympics, and uh, and so she's from the United States, obviously. And uh, check this one out. This is the kind of canoe you would use if you want to see the fish as you're canoeing along there. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty that's pretty cool. That's um, I'm not sure if that's the flex seal canoe or not, but uh, uh, anyway, this uh, this kind of canoe here maybe this is what you think of as a canoe has that little extra support. Does anybody know why the Hawaiian canoe has that little extra support on the side? Anybody know why? You know. Yeah, that's exactly right, because they come in on the surf, and it uh, helps them. When you don't have a surfboard, you can at least ride the canoe. So it helps keep them uh, upright as they, uh, as they ride in the canoe. There's a, oh, there's a rowboat, nice romantic little rowboat out on the lake uh, with chaperone, of course, um, there. And uh, let me see. Uh, you have those that are nice for sitting and relaxing. This is a pontoon boat, and uh, so then you have boats that are built for speed. Speed boats; those make nice, uh, makes nice, makes good for uh, skiing and tubing. How many have you been skiing, water skiing? Really? If you spend half the time, yeah, I suppose. If if you tried, um, I suppose that'd be all right. Um, they have uh, they got boats that move people and cars. Uh, called ferries. They ferry from one uh, port to the other, <clears throat> and they have boats that, uh, luxury boats. Um, yeah, I just snapped a quick picture of this one before I had them launch it out in my, um, <laughs> yeah, out in my swimming pool. This is my pool. Uh, I launched it out in. Uh, and then they have boats that, uh, boats for people who uh, want to go to, uh, on a floating resort. Um, that's basically what that is. Um, and uh, all sorts of entertainment and fun on that big boat. And they've got boats that carry our stuff all the way across the ocean. And uh, so all kinds of boats. And uh, today we are going to talk about, the, uh, talk about a very famous boat, um, the ark that Noah built. So let's find Genesis chapter number 7. In our Bible, Genesis chapter number 7. How many of you remember the very first lesson in this series that we did? You remember the very first lesson? Hmm, I know, it's been like three weeks ago. I can barely remember yesterday because of summertime. Anybody started school yet? How many have you started school? Started school? All right, about half All right, of the kids anyway. All right. Uh, do you remember this guy? Hydro, Hydro the whale, reminding us that we have, right, we have a whale of a problem, don't we? What's the whale of the problem that we have? Sin. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, last week, I was not here last week. We were out on vacation last week, but I understand we had a, uh, a very special guest speaker that came in. You might would call him an archaeologist. But uh, anyway, he, he, uh, he told us about this. Right? The hammerhead shark who tells us to... That's right. We've got to nail obedience. And uh, so we're at, um, nailing obedience just like, G, uh, just like Noah did. All right. Now, tonight I need some, uh, I need some helpers tonight, some folks that are going to help me out. And I need, I need to... I need an arc. So if we can have like this area right from like one, two, three, if we can have this be our arc. So you guys, you can be helpers, but you're going to have to move. I should have just put reserved seats or something over here. But, um, but I need somebody who can, uh, who can be, um, who, who can be Noah for me. Uh, Brother Greg, can you be Noah for me? 
Would that be okay? Would that be all right? I know you worked all day, but if you, if you can be Noah for me, that'd be, that'd be really awesome. Um, maybe Noah's, uh, Noah's uh, let me see. Let's see here. Let me do it this way. Here's, um, here's Noah. Here's, uh, oh, yeah, okay, hold on, hold on just a second. I got, uh, huh. oh, there we go. There's, there's, uh, there's Noah, right? And uh, we need, um, oh, let me see, who else? Oh, my goodness, now I'm out of, uh, oh, I need a, um, I need Noah's family. So where's uh, where's Mrs. Noah at? Who's anybody volunteer? <laughs> We're gonna have to assign them. Nobody's volunteering like at all to be Mrs. Noah. So, so, um, but we need a Mrs. Noah. L- Lori, you want to be Mrs. Noah for us? Or that way, that way, Greg doesn't feel too bad. There you go. And uh, and I need. Um, I need some of Elsa's Noah's family. I need a ham. Who's a ham? <laughs> Ethan, you're a ham. Come on over here, bud. And uh, and I need a I need a Mrs. Ham. Any any takers on Mrs. Ham? Yeah, there you go. Ashlyn, you want to be Mrs. Ham? Come on over here. Be Mrs. Ham for us. Here we go. That's right. I got to get rid of what's not. What do you mean? It's not legal. Well, it's. <laughs> I don't want to mention this right away, but it's not real. All right, there you go. Uh, Shem, who do we have for Shem? Uh, let me see. Mike. Mike, need, Mike. Oh, Mike is here. Mike, you want to come be Shem for us? I need a Mrs. Shem, too. So you, you want to choose your Mrs.? <laughs> uh. That's all right. That's all right. We're gonna we're gonna get it. Anybody? Uh, I need a Mrs. Mrs. Shem, and I ripped your name tag. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Bailey, you want to be Mrs. Shem? No, no. Ruby, you want to be Mrs. Shem for us? All right. Yeah, there we go. All right, there you go. Oh, this is fun. Who's gonna be Japheth? We need Japheth. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on up. Come on. And I need a Mrs. I need a Mrs. Japheth as well. Here, put the other half of that. There we go. Mrs. Japheth, anybody? Any takers on Mrs. Japheth? Maybe somebody in the. Oh, you're gonna do. It? Okay, all right. There we go. All right. So I've still got one spot to clear out here for my arc. So, um, so uh, let me see. Uh, Caitlin, you can come be a. Um, you can come be a scoffer. All right. So um, that's really appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna you got the look um and i need some i need some animals um who can be an animal some of you guys some of you ladies from the back there is, oh, oh brother Josue is here brother Josue can be an animal um yeah uh, you can be well oh there you go and you have a and you have a pair all right here we go here's a oh no wait this this here get this one here get, let me get let me get this this one started for you there we go all right there, that's the sticky one. That's the one you want right there. What's that? Can I pick my animal? Uh, yeah, actually, you're going you're gonna to be several animals. You're going to be animal representative is, uh, is what you're going to be there. And then, uh, and then, Robert, you're still here? Oh, good, because I need um, I need the sound effects guy, uh, if you can be a sound effects. Yeah, no, 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 come on, Isaiah. I'll, I'll let both of you guys uh, work sound effects crew here. Um, so there you go, and, uh, and then here you go. All right, excellent. Here we go. All right, now you got to... Excellent. All right, so... All right, now we're ready. Oh, somebody's made a mess, so... Just be careful. Be careful of the... uh... That's right. Now, Genesis chapter number 7. All right, and uh, we, we left off last time... When uh, now you guys are going to help me act out the the scene here, okay? So we've got our actors and actresses um, playing the part here. So now, when we left off last week, uh, Noah was building his ark, right? Do you remember that? Noah was building the ark last time. So Noah, oh. 
so hard to find good help anymore. <laughs> now, as you, you, now you guys that are acting it out, you're completely silent because we have a sound effects crew, a, an entire professional sound effects crew working tonight. So Noah, if you would come and uh, and build your help build your art because that's where we left you off. I even give you some tools to to work with. There you go. So this is your ark right over here. This whole section right here. You can come over here and build your ark. And you got to measure. You got to get a hammer and pound. Hammer pound out the. Uh... Dang, dang. Wow, that's the quietest, most awkward hammer I've ever heard. Um, hope you're doing it right though. All right. So uh, what else did uh, what else did Noah do? Noah, keep building. Keep building. You got to keep building there, bud. Uh, what else did Noah do? He was not only building the ark, he also did something else. Do you remember? It's a saw. Vrupa. All right. All right. Second Peter two five gives us a clue here. It says God not not spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. Right? So he was not only building the ark, he was also preaching, preaching the word, right? So Noah's got to preach too. Um, no, 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 no. We have a sound effects crew. And a, I will preach the word. Uh, that would be the Bible doesn't tell us exactly. Uh, exa- doesn't Bible doesn't tell us exactly what Noah was preaching, right? But we what we know that uh, that if he was a preacher of righteousness, he was p- preaching repent from your sin, from your evil ways. Uh, repent because the because God's judgment is coming, right? And so these were some of the things that um, that Noah was preaching, and uh, and so all of this went on for many, many, many. Many, uh, many, many years. And uh, no one believed Noah except for Noah's family. All right? So no one believed that. Now, probably there were some people who mocked Noah. And uh, so where's my scoffer at? Uh, My representative scoffer here. (laughs) So she, um, our our scoffer here is... uh, Probably making fun of Noah, telling Noah he's a crazy old man. What are you doing building a boat? Um, all sorts of, of mean scoffer things uh, that the scoffer's saying to Noah. But you know that, that old uh, you know that old phrase, you know, Noah, you're building your boat, remember? Uh, but you, you remember that old phrase, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Right, so probably some of the scoffers were like, "No, you have to quit building this boat." So what they what they probably did was got some sticks and stones to throw at Noah while he was building. So uh, so Noah, you just keep building your boat, and the scoffers are going to come throw some sticks and stones at you. <laughs> sticks and stones, throwing sticks and stones. Whoa. At poor old Noah. Oh my goodness. Poor Noah. All right. Now let's pause right here. Pause right here. Because let's look at Scripture for just a minute. Genesis 7, verse 2 says, Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of the beasts that there are not clean by two, the male and his female, of the fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the females, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. So there was no... And it, this is, now this is interesting. Now think about this for just a minute. What is, an, what is a clean and an unclean beast? Right? According to what? That's right, and, and sacrifice. Eaten or sacrificed. According to what? The law, which was 
not given yet. How did Noah even know what was a clean beast or an unclean beast? By being a righteous man and a preacher of righteousness, God would show him what was to be and, uh, and what was acceptable. I can imagine, just for me, I imagine that there were some, that God had to tell Noah this because he's like, well, yeah, I get it. You need a male and a female of each, but this group came and there's seven of them. Do I just pick? There's seven pairs. Do I just pick some? I think God told him this just so that he would know what to expect when the animals were coming uh, into the ark. So Noah did not go around and collect the animals. He was busy doing what? Building the boat and preaching. And preaching. That's right. So um, God sent to the ark a pair of each kind of animals. Animal pairs and uh, the, go. Yeah, you got to go collect. Your, yeah, that's that's right. You're a pair. You're a pair right there. And so God sent them to the ark. Uh, animals like uh, like elephants. Uh, uh, giraffes. <laughs> Zebras. Monkeys? All right. All right. Very good. Oh, my goodness. Wow. All right. Very good. So God sent all of these animals right to the ark. I, I mean, the way that this is worded and how, it's, and, uh, and how it says kind of sounds like the animals were kind of hanging around out in the ark. Uh, before they even got onto the ark, so it's kind of a very interesting way of thinking about um, way of thinking about this. Now, there are some scoffers even today who would say Noah's ark. I don't care how big you say it was; it was not big enough for every single animal, for a pair of every single animal. And you know what? They're right. But what does the Bible tell us? The Bible tells us that they sent every kind of animal. In other words, let's just look at dogs for a minute. How many breeds of dogs are there? Today, a lot. And even more and more as we, as we continue to go. So here's a dog genealogy chart that I, uh, that I found. And, uh, and it's interesting because... All of these breeds, and they, you can see the little dotted lines where they've been crossed and, and how they're related one up, way up here to one way down here. But they all kind of filter up to a kind. All you need is one kind. After that, after the flood, when the, when the water subsided and all the animals went out, that pair began to breed. And then as those pairs bred and interbred and intermingled, this, it's the exact same way that we end up with all of these different breeds of dogs uh, that we have today. So Noah didn't need enough room for two of every single kind of, uh, or every single specific breed of dog that we have today, all he needed was one pair. Now let's talk about, because uh, uh, there's scoffers today, even today, just like in Noah's day, there's scoffers who say, well, what about the dinosaurs? They were too big to be on the ark. Well, what do we know about reptiles? Reptiles continue to grow their entire life. How old was Noah? 600 years old. So if Noah was living longer and reptiles were living longer and the reptiles never stopped growing, they could get pretty big. Now, I've seen some reptiles. Where I grew up in Florida, we had some of these. This is, this is called an anole. Uh, lizard. We just called it a lizard. I've seen these guys up close and personal. They are really, really cool. They only get about this, about this long, the really big ones this long, right? 
I've, I've spent hours with these, and they're very they're kind of curious, kind of pretty docile um, creatures. But when you get one up close like this, and you see all the intricate little detailing in the scales, and you see how their how their features are, and you look at their you look at their feet and their claws, and you think this is a dinosaur. Now, if they were able to live as long as Noah was, and they were oh, sorry, and they were able to breed so that you could have all kinds of different uh, different breeds among them. So even even this uh, even this one right here, some of them look pretty dinosaurish, don't they? Yeah, and uh, so you can see the the resemblance there. There's even some of them that um, that this guy is so fast, he's uh, walking on the water there. Um, they call him the Jesus lizard because he scampers across the water. <laughs> but uh, true, but uh, but anyway, all right, so. Uh, Noah and his family are all ready to go into the ark. Where's Noah and where's his family? Uh, Mrs. Noah's here. Uh, Hem, uh, Shem, Ham is here with Mrs. Ham and uh, Mrs. J Japheth and Mrs. Japheth and uh, Shem and Mrs. Shem. They're all ready to go into the ark and they're all ready to be followed into the ark by the animals. So animal, our representative our animal representative there, and uh, there, so scoffers. Yeah, scoffers have to be on the outside uh, looking in. So, um, so you can come over. And so, the interesting thing about this, as we read uh, Genesis seven verse number sixteen, they all uh, they that went in went in male and female of all flesh as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The Lord shut him in. When we looked last week, we looked at the picture of the ark and how huge it is and how massive it is. When we look at that door and how heavy that door must have been, there's no way that Noah closed that door from the inside. There's no way. And again, scoffers even today would say the same thing. Yeah, but how did Noah get the door closed? Huh? 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 Because even if he even if he could have harnessed up, I don't know, some elephants or something to pull the door, and he had this like pulley system all rigged up, he still couldn't do it. Because if, I mean, think think about this: Did all of these animals need to be adults? No, of course not. So if they had baby elephants, what good are they in closing the door? They just want to play. And sleep. You ever seen baby elephants? They're pretty cute. But really all they want to do is play and sleep and and annoy the adults. Just like, huh, anyway. Um, but the Bible here, the Bible here gives us the very, very clear answer. God did it. God shut the door. Now, when God closed the door, Noah could certainly have sealed it off from the inside. He certainly could have used the pitch to seal up the door, but God closed that door. And uh, so, and Noah, by the way, 600-year-old um, Noah, which is why I picked Greg, but 600-year-old Noah, 600-year-old Noah, he's not getting that door closed. He's an old man. Now he's got a couple hundred years left in him, but he's still getting up there. And, uh, and so God, God helped them out and, uh, and closed uh, close that door. They are there for about a week, getting settled in, getting settled into the ark. Getting settled, in. getting settled into the ark for about a week before the, uh, before the, oh, sorry, Mrs. Noah's waiting back there and she's hiding from you. Sorry. <laughs> but... Uh, then, and sound effects crew, you can go over to the to the other side. I appreciate you. Though. Scoffers, you can scoffers, you can stay right there for just a minute. Because uh... oh, sorry, sound effects crew, did you guys close the door? What? Wow. What was it? 
It's like a pneumatic door. It's like the, one of the automatic closers. That's what I what got going on there. All right. Anyway, so in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. The fountains of the deep was referring to the bottom of the oceans, the ocean floor breaking apart and releasing enormous amounts of water that were stored underneath it. Volcanoes erupting. Earthquakes taking place like we have never seen. And all kinds of cataclysmic action from the breaking open of the deep. The windows of heaven opened up, releasing enormous amounts of water from the atmosphere uh, from above as well. And how many days did it rain like this? Forty days and forty nights. Forty days and forty nights. Now, several weeks ago, we had some rain come through Barstow, unlike I have ever seen in Barstow, me personally. I mean, it was a Sunday night. It was after church. Kids were out there playing in the rain. And uh, when we got to leave, we, we braved the, uh, the, the storm. And we got out. We got ready to leave. And Main Street was like a river of trash floating down the, down the river of Main Street right here in front of the church. It was incredible. It was in, unlike anything. And that storm was like 35 minutes I mean, and for me, I would say, oh, the windows of heaven opened up. Oh, not even close. Can you imagine torrents of rain 40 days and 40 nights? If we had that level of rain for 40 days and 40 nights, duh, that, would, that would put a hurting on us. We would, we would know it. But imagine for Noah and his family, for everyone in the ark right here, earthquakes volcanoes erupting, torrents of rain and water. How scary that must have been for Noah and his family. But there they were in the ark. It probably, now I can't say this with any certainty, Scripture doesn't tell us, but probably it crossed a few of them mind, are we sure we're safe in here? Are we sure we're all right in here? Are we sure it's not going to start leaking through? And God, God kept them safe. The water completely covered the earth. This is what uh, this is what the Bible says in verse number nineteen. The waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. This is not the flood of Barstow from a couple weeks ago. This is every single hill, hilltop, mountain, everything on the entire planet was covered in water. Now you have to remember the planet did not look like we see it today. The only planet that we have a record of is after the flood. After all of this after all of this catastrophic shaking and quaking, everything takes place. So all of the mountains that we know and all of the, the, the canyons and valleys, this is all post-floods. A lot of it, uh, I mean, it's all a result of, uh, of the flood. So it's even different than we, than we even think of it today. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail and the mountains were covered. Everything... Everything was covered. Uh, verse number 21, All the flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and the beasts, of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man, everyone that was not in that boat. Oh, these scoffers, they had a good time, didn't they? These scoffers, they had a good time picking on old Noah. 
making fun of Noah. Crazy old Noah building a boat for his farm. Crazy old Noah. But you know what happened to all of these scoffers? They all died. Go die. Verse number 22. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life and all that was in the dry land died. Everything died. Everyone who was not on that boat died. Most incredible thing is that God made a way of escape for Noah and his family. God made a way for Noah and his family to be saved from the destruction. And really, it's an incredible thing to realize that God has made a way for us to be saved from the destruction of hell as well. Noah's Ark is a picture for us. It is, a, it is an illustration for us. Just as, uh, just as it saved Noah from the physical death, we can be saved from death too, a spiritual death that causes us to be separated from God's goodness forever. We don't need to get on an ark to be saved, God, but God has sent His Son, Jesus, to die on a cross to save us from our sins. So just as the ark was the way God saved Noah and his family, Jesus is the way that God saves us from eternal death and hell. God sent His Son, Jesus, to die for sinners like me and for you. It was a painful death. It was an awful death. Not because Jesus was sinful, not because He had done something wrong, not because He had, uh, he had done all of these terrible and horrible things. In fact, He never did one of those things. Not one time did Jesus ever sin. Instead, His death was painful and awful and gruesome because of your sin, because of my sin. Jesus took upon Himself the sin of all of us. Jesus died on that cross. They took Him down and He was buried. Well, something else amazing happened. He rose from the dead. Jesus rose up from the dead. And because of that, we can have eternal life. That is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he came, He lived, He died, He was buried, but He rose again on that third day. And that's where we find hope. That's where we find life. Life is not at the cross. Life is in that empty tomb. Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. Just as Noah and his family had to go through that door to get into the ark. You notice... Noah couldn't close the door. God closed the door. So why is that so significant? Why is that such a big deal? Because of the doorway of our salvation, it's not operated by us either. The doorway of our salvation is the Lord Jesus Himself. Jesus says in, uh, in John chapter 19, um, I don't remember which I have this or not, John 10 verse number 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Jesus is the way. So, so in order to receive this eternal life, three, uh, three key points. Number one, admit. Admit that you are a sinner. Admit that you have sinned. You have broken God's law. You have disobeyed God's commandment. In some way, in some short way, in some small way, it doesn't matter. We've all broken God's law. Number two, believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that He is the Son of God. Believe that He came, lived a sinless life. Believe that He did that for you. 
to take your sin debt and have it paid in full. No merit of your own. No working of your own. There's absolutely nothing you can do to make it work. (laughs) But it's already done. You believe that. And then thirdly, you forever receive it. You forever receive whatever the Lord Jesus gives. Pierce the Puffin is our helper for this week, our animal pal. And uh, he reminds us to get on board, to trust the Lord and get on board. Just as Noah and his family had to get on board that ark, you and I have to get on board of the salvation that the Lord Jesus offers. So do you know with certainty of a time when you've believed this message, when you've admitted your sin and you asked Jesus to save you? If so, you've come on board and you're encouraging others to come aboard. If not, you can come aboard today, even right now. All you need to do is offer a simple prayer to the Lord, to God Himself, acknowledging those three things. God, today I admit I am a sinner. I've disobeyed Your commandment. But I believe that Jesus did what the Bible says He did. And I want to receive Your gift of salvation. That's it. That's all that's needed to come on board. So let's pray together. Lord, we thank You so much for the salvation that You freely offer to each one of us. Lord, today I pray that You would help us. No matter where we are in life, how old we are, our age, no matter what our station, no matter where we're at in life, whether we think we have everything together, whether everything has fallen apart, Lord, I pray that You would help us to trust You. Father, I pray that if there is one here tonight that does not know You as their Savior, that today would be that day of salvation, that today would be the day that they admit that sin, they believe on You, and they receive You with all of their heart. If you're here tonight, and you would say, Preacher, that's me. I have never done that before. I've never realized it. it's just that simple. But today I recognize that and I, I want to pray this prayer and I want to receive Jesus today. If that's your testimony, would you let me know that? Would you slip your hand up? Just put it up, put it back down. Preacher, pray with me and help me because I, I want to pray this prayer right now and get this settled. Someone like that today? Say, Preacher, pray for me. then by our testimony, everyone here is already aboard God's salvation. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time you were like Noah? Busy building, yes, but also busy preaching. Busy telling others about the salvation that God so freely offers. Maybe you're here tonight and you'd say, Preacher, I, God's spoken to me. I need to be more, more like Noah and, sh- and preach the gospel and preach repentance. You'd say, Preacher, would you pray for me? Would you let me? Yes, God bless you. God bless you. Someone else. Yes, God bless you all over tonight. Yes, God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Father, you've seen these hands. You know our hearts. Lord, I pray that you would help us tonight. That you would help each and every one of us, myself included, Lord, we get so busy. And I think that might be one of the the plans of the devil here uh, today. is just to keep us so busy building and doing that we forget to preach. We forget to tell others about you and about your salvation. Lord, forgive us of that. But Lord, help us tonight to determine to continue preaching the gospel, sharing with others. That, uh, that, that they can come aboard your salvation just as well. It's freely available to anyone. 
Lord, we thank you for the salvation that you offer to us. We thank you for your, your plan, perfect plan. Lord, tonight I pray that you would help us to encourage others to come aboard to accept you as well. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, we have a memory verse here for this week. It's Psalm 31, verse 14. It says, But I trusted in thee, O Lord, I said, Thou art my God. And what a great, great statement. I trusted in thee, O Lord, I said, Thou art my God. Let's say this verse together, all right? Ready, begin. Psalm 31, 14. But I trusted in Thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. Let's, that's great. Do it one more time. Psalm 31, 14. But I trusted in Thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. Very good. We have... Um, I've got a couple things that I, that I want to, to give to you to kind of help you to remember our lesson for this week. And, uh, and so I want to, uh, to, to hand everyone, well, as many as I can. I don't know how many of these I've got, but I've got, I've got, uh, I've got arcs for everybody. And, uh, and now these are awesome. These are little pullback arcs. And let me tell you something, they, they really go, and they're, and they're great fun, all right? So we'll have the we'll have the kids come get uh, come get one of these. Um, also, I have I have some of the uh, some of the in, the um, inhabitants of the ark um, that were um, or, no 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 that one's yours you keep that one uh, and uh, so yeah that's what I was talking about so uh, so the the inhabitants of the ark here so that um, so to remind us of of. Uh, of all of those that were on the uh, on the ark there together, and we have a creature feature. Dun dun dun! All right, so we talked about uh, we talked about Pierce Pierce the puffin. Anybody know anything about puffins? Anybody know anything about them? Anybody? Anybody? No one. Oh, here we go. Back here, nice and loud for us. What do you know about them? They're a bird. Very good. Anybody else? Anybody who hasn't already read all the material on it? (laughs) They stink. stink. What do you know? They eat clams. Like from Red Lobster? Oh, no. Butter with the butter sauce. They dip them in the butter sauce. What if I told you this the only bird that flies in the air and underwater? Ooh, that's pretty cool. All right, technically when it's underwater, it's not flying anymore. But God did make it in such a way that it would fly in the air and it also uses its wings to fly in the water and to swim really, really fast as it uh, as it goes and grabs uh, as it goes fishing goes fishing anybody uh anybody like going fishing puffins go fishing all the time they just dive right in and uh, use those wings to go uh, wings to go fishing so a couple of them in the uh, in the water there um, let me see how many times let me see let's uh, let's do this how many times can you flap your arms in 10 seconds? How many times? All right, hold on just a second. I'm going to, I'm going to, now don't, don't flap your neighbor, uh, all right? But I'm going to count to 10 and you count how many times you can flap your arms, okay? All right? Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. One, two, all right, stop. All right, how many flaps did you get? Forgot to count. How many flaps? 20. Anybody get higher than 20? How many did you get? So we'll say 30. 40. All right. Did you get 40? Did you get one? You just you really forgot to, to, to count. All right. We get 30, 40, 50. 
The puffin can flap its wings over 66 times in 10 seconds. With all that wing action, it gets up pretty fast. It can, uh, can get up to 55 miles an hour. That's pretty, uh, that's, that's moving uh, for a bird. Now, they normally stay close to the surface, but they can also dive down to about, uh, oh, sorry, I'm going the wrong way here. They can also dive down to about 200 feet. That's as tall, that's as far down as, anybody ever been to the, uh, the Empire State Building in New York City? Have you ever been there? I've never been there. But it would be like two of those stacked on top of each other. That's amazing. That's a, sorry, sorry. That's a, just 200 feet. That's a 20-story building. All right, so they feed all of their, their they stay out in the water. Um, until it is time to, uh, to, to lay eggs and have babies. And then they come on land and uh, they, are, they nest on the land. But all of the other time they spend on the water. They feed their babies whole fish so they can carry up to 30 fish in their beak at, uh, at one time. That's amazing. So just a few things about Pierce the Puffin. Pierce who... Uh, reminds us to trust in the Lord and to get on board. All right. We have one more song that we want to sing. Do you remember it? Probably not. But that's okay. We're going to sing it anyway. All right? The Lord told Noah there's going to be a floody floody. You remember this one? I added the claps so we know when to, when to clap this time. All right, here we go. Uh, we're going to do the verses and then we'll do the chorus together. Here we go. The Lord told Noah, there's going to be a floody, floody. The Lord told Noah, there's going to be a floody, floody. Get those children out of the muddy, muddy children of the Lord. The Lord told Noah to build him an arky, arky. The Lord told Noah to build him an arky, arky. Build it out of go for barky, barky children of the Lord. The animals, they came in, they came in by twosies, twosies. The animals, they came in, they came in by twosies, twosies. Elephants and kangaroosies, roosies, children. Um, here we go. So rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine. Give God the glory, glory. Rise, shine. Give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. Send your young people up to get some animal crackers and an ark. Look out. Woohoo. Here we go. Still more. Keep it coming. Oh, yeah. Nice. Gonna need another. Woo, there you go. Good job. You ready? Oh, that was a bad toss. Give it to a kid. All right, who's next? Who's next? Are you ready? I'll, I'll do my best. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Oh, another bad toss. I'll get, I'll get Rose. There we go. All right. Are you ready? You gonna catch it? She's not sure. She's not sure. You ready? Here we go. All right. There you go. All right. There we go, buddy. Jordan. All right. Delilah. Whoa. Sorry about that. Oh, here we go. Another. Excellent. Anybody not get one? Anybody not get one? Wait. Oh, there we go. All right. Oh. Oh, to the back. All right, these fly good. I need to get these for my class. She didn't get one? She got one? Okay. Yes, yes, we're getting that one. There you go. Let's see if we can get, I really don't know how many of these I've got, so. Did you get it? You got one? There we go. All right, look out for flying arcs. Be careful of flying arcs. Flying. 
Here, let's get the let's get the little ones. Be sure the little ones get one first. There we go. Here, pick up this uh, ger- uh, cat or whatever it is before somebody steps on it. Here we go. Yes. Here we go. And there. There we go. All right, one for you. You need one? There you go. You're welcome, bud. All right. Did everybody get one? All the kids get one. Everybody get one. Everybody get one in the back? Back here. Anybody else need an Arky Arky? Anybody else need need an Arky? I, am I done? No, I've got a couple other things to pass out. Anybody, anybody else need an Arky? Oh, yeah. You can be done being Noah. All right. I got four or five of those left. Put an Arky. Harky in your car. All right. I do also have, I do also have the uh, the memory verse here for tonight. Uh, coloring page and Pierce Puffin coloring page. So come get your coloring pages as well. Memory verse. Coloring page. There you go. No, I don't really want to throw these at you. They're too. They're too soft. There you go. Excellent. Very good. Awesome. Thank you guys for your help tonight. Appreciate that. There we go. Oh, they're stuck. Here we go. You're very welcome. All right, here we go. Ugh, they're sticking together. Here we go. Just play it. There you go, my dear. Happy birthday to you. Whoop! Happy birthday to you. Woohoo! Happy birthday. Miss Roberta, happy birthday to you. Thank you for spending your birthday with us tonight. Enjoy your aminal crackers. Happy birthday, aminal crackers. It's your coloring page here. Anybody else not get a, did you get a, it depends on how old you are. It's either a coloring page or it's your memory verse. Anybody else need, uh, anybody else? Brother Bobby, did you get your coloring page? Oh, no. Oh, no. Here, get this. Here, you guys, you guys can do a competition, and whichever one's nicer goes on the fridge, all right? Here, you, <laughs> here we go. All right, did you get your coloring page, Brother Greg? You got to get a coloring page. 